This year is going to be a little bit different for Call of Duty in many ways, but perhaps one of the biggest is that of how content is handled post-launch. The past few years, we've seen a shift to more consistent updates, allowing for players to always be immersed in some new content to some extent, rather than the simple drop four maps all at once every two months and call it a day. That was something we were used to back in the days previously when the Season Pass model was first introduced. With Black Ops 4, there were strides made to allow for more constant updates, including events, and as we get closer to the current day and present time, events have been split into halves to allow for more major updates more frequently. But along with events, maps were treated differently, and this year looks to continue that trend. With the announcement of no traditional season pass and maps coming to all players for free, still with that one catch of the one week of PlayStation 4 exclusivity, what can we expect though in terms of DLC and the big he who must not be named in the way of microtransactions with this year's upcoming Modern Warfare? Today, I want to discuss and break down what we know in some ways that we may see some things working out over the next year of content. As we mentioned, the first thing that we can definitively say here about this that's been echoed since the very reveal is that DLC maps will be free with no traditional season pass. So maps are presumably going to be coming in a consistent manner of drops, perhaps maybe even comparable to that of the COD Elite system back in Modern Warfare 3 days in which we had the drops of maps, spec ops missions, and face-off maps, which we see all three of those being contained in some capacity within Modern Warfare again. The face-off equivalent being the 2v2 gunfight mode, and maybe there is is at launch something that supports 1v1 and 3v3 play also like face-off did back in the day but for right now it's just that 2v2 game mode but i digress it's something that hopefully should be something a little more consistent than that of what we saw with black ops 4. maybe again playing into that call of duty elite model where we have maps dropping on a monthly basis though of course still with that exclusivity which in comparable timetables was something that xbox had for an entire month back in the modern warfare 3 days but this also then brings in some skepticism because because if you're willing to drop one revenue model in the way of a season pass on the terms of Activision, for a company like Activision, it's only natural to assume that they're gonna try and pick that revenue back up somewhere else that we don't know of just yet. And that is something that truly does scare a lot of people. Ideally speaking, we see Modern Warfare as a base game completely left alone, being purely for the players and for the fans. Something fair and balanced with content and with the money needing to be made back from the drop of a season pass model in things like the free to play nature and items that Call of Duty has on offer. It would be absolutely perfect if Activision were like, all right, COD Mobile is gonna make us a ton of money. Let's just leave Modern Warfare as is. Or if Battle Royale eventually does come as rumored, it'd be a free to play application allowing for monetization there also in which, again, you could have that hopeful possibility that everything is left out of Modern Warfare, but that's a pure and absolutely idealistic thought to have. And well, nothing ever works as ideally intended. So the true depths of the MTX system as we'll know it within the next year is right now, entirely unknown. We do have a few certainties at the moment, and we'll break those down first and then talk about things to come later in the video, but we'll have to see if it's something that up front sounds nice and warps into something not so nice like what we saw with Black Ops 4, or if it's something that maybe it's exactly how it works. What we're told is what we get. The biggest key part here for me is that of weapons. Of course, that's the most universally used pieces of content that will drop probably as the last couple of years. Maps are great and everything like that, but I can use a weapon 10 times more than I'd probably play on a DLC map in a regular rotation in matchmaking. So for that sense, the weapons are probably the most worthwhile and useful things that you have in terms of DLC content, but they haven't been handled the greatest ways as of recent years. Out of a recent interview with Game Informer, Joe Seacott and Taylor Kurosaki ended up talking with Game Informer about a lot of the internet's most buzzing questions about the game, and weapons were of course naturally a big talking point here of this. There are two questions in particular that stood out. They ended up saying, will there be weapons post-launch? And two, is there loot boxes? For the first one, will there be weapons post-launch? It was a straight up yes, and they're excited to show off more weapons that will go into the gunsmith. And that's something that you have a system that builds out 60 plus attachments for every single weapon, or I guess 30 in the case of pistols, but you get the picture. It's way more in depth than any other create a class system we've seen beforehand. And so they're excited to do this with even more weapons, continue that support as the year goes along. But the second question of of is there loot boxes in game? Joe Seacott initially answered with no comment here on this, but then later said that they were wanting to put the players first and they want to develop a player forward system, something that's more consumer friendly than what we've seen in recent times, probably more so taking jabs at say Black Ops 4. They did that actually talking about some of the weapon skins even, saying how you wouldn't see airplanes on your weapons, which 
The only thing we've seen that in is Black Ops 4. Now, we'll come back to the topic of discussion of loot boxes a little bit later, because it'd be absolutely foolish to assume that there are no loot boxes, despite some of the new agreements between platforms to display odds and the consistent push between legislation and community to outlaw them. But until that happens, they're not going away. But I also don't know if we can look upon the plans of day one modern warfare content with the same cynicism that we have for day 328 as it is now of Black Ops 4's life cycle for a few reasons. The first of which being that weapons are told to be the characters of this game. They've reiterated that statement across a number of interviews they've done. They've said it to us in person at the studio, and it's something that they really want to make the weapons the storytellers of this game in particular. Again, you could probably see that most notably in the gunsmith. That is such a huge overhaul in terms of how you can customize and completely custom tailor your weapon to how you see fit. And so therefore, I don't necessarily know if I see them taking something they're so passionate about and locking them behind a collection or a loot box or something like that. That just wouldn't necessarily make as much sense to me. With such a big push on the weapons in and of themselves this year, that kind of 180 is absolutely huge. And secondly, Infinity Ward systems have historically been consumer friendly actually. If you go all the way back to Ghost with the first weapons introduced post launch in an Infinity Ward title, we had the Maverick A1 and A2 which was a rifle sniper rifle hybrid and then you had the Ripper which was a bullpup SMG, both of which being added in with the season pass DLC map packs that came along with that being the Onslaught and the Devastation DLC packs and both were available for purchase separately as well. So you either got it for free with what you had the DLC pack if you had the season pass it came with it. You could buy the individual map pack, get the maps and the weapon, or you could just buy the weapon outright. And then same thing with Infinite Warfare. Infinite Warfare had base weapons of all DLC weapons in the season pass and available for a short grindable challenge for those that did not have the season pass, making it a varying level of free to all players, but not exclusively locked behind supply drops. Sure, there were variants in supply drops, but the base weapon everybody could actually get rather easily and still experience the weapon on day one. You can't really say the same about Black Ops 4. And trust me, as skeptical as Black Ops 4's post-launch MTX system has made me, the historical comparison between Infinity Ward and Treyarch titles as of recent years is night and day. Treyarch before Black Ops 4 had Black Ops 3, which was almost universally considered the worst system for how DLC weapons were handled, placed exclusively in supply drops. And sure, if you were a grinder in that game, you got actually a lot more than what you do in Black Ops 4. You got much more of a yield out of common and rare supply drops. And of course, you could earn things a lot faster between the crypto keys and your duplicates that you ended up getting. And then Black Ops 4 took that cake of taking it and then just blowing it completely out of proportion to the system that we know of now. But Infinity Ward hasn't really had those same blemishes. Sure, the games themselves may not have been the most hotly anticipated or well-received, but the systems in place for weaponry are like saints compared to the Treyarch MTX systems. And I also would like to think that with Infinity Ward spearheading the topic and tackling it at least in part head on, and the track record again of Infinity Ward previously, that it won't be something that of milking the cash cow like we see again this year. But again, I could be entirely off base. I'm just going off of previously laid out things that we've seen from a consumer's perspective. Now, camo wise, that's another big thing that personally I care about because as I've stated many times here within Black Ops 4's main year of content is that in a game based in a first person perspective, that's the only thing you'll ever really see 100% of the time. But they actually touched on this in that interview again, where they said they wanted camos to be grindable. They want it to be something that truly shows some accolades here with this. If you end up having some super awesome camo that is at that top tier, people in game will know dang, he really grinded his tail off for that. He did that challenge. So they want them to have a sort of certain prestige to them and be, of course, all naturally obtainable, which gets me excited because it seems like they're, just by the gravity of that statement, maybe more challenges to unlock for camos at launch than maybe any other game previously, outside of even maybe just say weapon camos for headshots like we see normally. They also, though, want them to be realistic. So things like your Dark Matter style will probably exist in the formatting, like how we have a top tier camo challenge of some sort, but probably not in the actual design. Exclusion Zone and Modern Warfare Remastered was one that I think was an acceptable middle ground for basing it in realism, but also being a bit 
out there, if you know what I mean. I can't imagine that this year brings along any challenges like we see how a Rainbow Diamond has for the reactive style of Diamond Camo in Black Ops 4, but they mentioned that if there's something like a Purple Camo, it will be based off of realistic purple variations they've seen out there in the wild. Maybe adding some more stuff to the fold, but not all that much. Other things, though, that I expect in terms of camos out there, post-launch stuff, I'd probably expect it to be like Modern Warfare Remastered, where we had some cool-looking designs, but nothing was really too tremendously over the top. I don't recall any camo within Modern Warfare Remastered being like, yeah, that that's corny. That's something that doesn't look good. So I think it'll probably be something around that design element. I think that Raven actually did a fantastic job with that kind of stuff. And then also one thing that personally I would like to see if they want to add things like collections that are grindable for all players or if it's something that they even may need something to throw in as filler is make it something worthwhile like weapon kits. I actually really enjoyed weapon kits within Modern Warfare Remastered. Sure, it could clash with some of your favorite camos if you tried to equip both of them, but weapon kits overall altered the weapon in a realistic and plausible sense and also also is something that looked pretty badass depending on which one you ended up having so I'd be cool if those make return in some capacity but outside of that we do know there will be filler things like weapon charms that's something that was confirmed as of recently I think it was yesterday depending on this video when it goes live that we saw in infinite warfare we saw within world war ii we saw within black ops 4 so that kind of stuff isn't anything new to me I didn't really want to think about it because it is kind of a damper it is filler material but if it is going to be coming as a sort of mainstay for some customization please for the love of all things don't make them parted out per individual weapon that absolutely kills the loot pool that kills any chance that players have of getting anything they want because one weapon charm immediately turns into in the case of probably modern warfare 30 40 weapon charms and then you're probably going to get dropped with them 10 at a time so that kind of stuff is dangerous, but right now, I don't think that I have enough information to completely be like, damn that all to hell. Other things that have been mentioned are that of operator outfits. They talked about not having the customization level of, say, advanced warfare all the way down to the boots, the knee pads, the gloves, but instead it would be stuff that was given overall. So maybe expect some things like some ghillie suits, some tack team outfits, and other stuff that we saw in Modern Warfare Remastered even. And also we see in some of the pre-order material as well. So you can see that that stuff is already being planted in the minds of the consumer and will probably be something that we see consistently added throughout the year other things now that i have absolutely no idea will be coming but is something that i would not be surprised is that of realistic emotes i don't think that they're going to do anything like world war ii or like black ops 4 with massive amounts of dancing moves or dabs or anything like that but i think that infinite warfare probably was actually a good stepping stone here for this first person emotes are pretty cool and they didn't really have all that many that were all out there a lot of them were just kind of hand gestures to end up signaling real life military callouts. Well, of course, some in DLC got a little crazy. You got to do some magic tricks with them and all, but I wouldn't be surprised if they make their way in in some regard as well. I also would be interested to see some things like some weapon skins in terms of maybe melee weapons. Some things like how we had in Modern Warfare, the Karambit knife. You could see things maybe like a bayonet and we saw the machete in some executions already in Modern Warfare. So with skins already being something that again are in pre-orders, wouldn't surprise me if we see some of those more melee weapon redesigns as well coming as something is either filler or added in collections or supply drops but we'll have to wait and see but anyways that's kind of my overall take on everything here within dlc and microtransactions within modern warfare and the potential that they have like i said again infinity ward has had a decent track record in recent years so even with how bad black ops 4 was there's a part of me that wants to give some leeway here but i guess only time will tell so I guess that's where we're going to leave it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think will become here of the DLC model with no traditional season pass? Do you think that we're going to see an influx in supply drops? Do you think that we'll see weapons? How we're seeing a player first forward system as described to us? Or do you think it will change up over time? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Love to get your thoughts and feedback. Let's try and keep it civil. I know this is something that's a very polarizing topic, but if we can keep it as civil as possible, that'd be great. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare all things call of duty the beta is coming right around the corner so we'll keep you guys up to date with all things you need to know about all of it so if you're interested in any of it hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing if you guys also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best place to get connected outside of youtube probably can live on both those so if you guys want to strike up conversation ask me a question wherever it may be the link is down there in the description below but i'll send out of the way thank you guys all so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace